So here under the store settings, we've looked at a few of these important screens. I'm going to jump over to I'm going to jump over to well, no, we'll just go in order because for example, let's look at checkout. Checkout, there's not much for us to do here because it's already set up pretty well. Um, one thing that I would say, we've got force user registration. Users can check out without a user account, and that's on by default. You can turn on user must register before checking out. The problem with that is this might increase user friction. So I might have mentioned the term before, but I'll mention it again. User friction, which is anything that causes the user any discomfort that then causes them to abandon the shopping process. Let's say I'm going to buy a product and I just simply want to click pay and here's my credit card. But before I do that, I have to create an account. Okay, I might take the time to do that. Then it requires me to go to my inbox to confirm my account. Okay, that's an extra step. I'm getting frustrated. Then I go back to my account. I thought I, I thought I approved it, but I log in and it says, okay, now log in. Okay, another hoop. So a lot of friction there. So if you require people to create an account, you're going to cause a little bit of friction there. And the more that they have, the more likely they'll drop this and go to Amazon. Now also notice, this is a catch-22 in the making. If you say users must register, but you did not let them register in the general screen here. Look at that. I don't have that on. Anyone can register. So I'm making them register, but I have no way for them to register. No one will ever register. No one will ever buy your product. See that catch-22 right there? But it tells you right here. Enabling this will also return on membership. Oh, this is new. Good. Enabling this will also turn on membership anyone can register. This is good. In the old days, like one or two versions ago, it did not do this. So in the old version, this would never turn on. Now it looks like if you turn this on, it'll turn it on for you, if it's not already enabled. That's pretty useful. No. This is creating an account at victorsbakery.com. And the PayPal one is optional not necessary. But they will need an account to buy the product here at our store. Shipping same as billing. Okay, this one's weird. I don't know why they don't have this one. I don't know why they didn't fix this one. You've bought products and it asks you for billing information, shipping information. Usually both are the same. And you fill in billing and then when it wants you to fill in shipping, you can just turn on a button and it'll copy one into the other. Look at this. That's not what it says. Users must re-enter shipping address for some reason. Friction. So turn on that first one. Enable same as billing checkbox. So when someone fills in the, um, the billing, then there'll be a button. Copy billing into shipping. Done. Not forcing them into retyping it. There's the friction. So I don't know why that one is not on by default. Yes? Definitely. It's still like that because if you want to, it has the option that you can copy from one field to the other. Or if you don't turn on the check mark, you can change things. Security and encryption. Force users to use SSL. Allow site to be used insecurely and unencrypted. That doesn't sound good. I want encryption. Well, just because I turn on that doesn't mean it's going to work. I need to still buy the SSL certificate because this is going to then direct your traffic to your HTTPS address, your secure address. You don't get HTTPS until you buy the certificate from your provider. So do not turn this one on unless you know you've bought SSL at Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever. So we'll have to use the unencrypted one, of course, because we don't have the the secure feature that we bought. We haven't bought the secure feature. And if you do turn that on, notice it says this can cause warnings if users do not have this properly set up. So we need to leave the default, but ideally we want the first one, but you need to pay for that. These checkout boxes are pretty much all good how they are. You can explore that on your own, but this is going to ask you first name or ask the buyer 
first name, last name, address, city. You can rearrange them by dragging those little lines up and down. You can make an option be visible or not, or mandatory or not. You can make it say something else, such as name, please, whatever you want. You can add extra fields. Notice on the right side, you can add a new field, such as Twitter name. We're asking for your Twitter name, and it's text. Text area is like to be able to write a paragraph, and text is just one line. You can play with this on your own. I'm not going to explain all of them. They should make sense. But this is that, this is that field that people will see, for example, when I'm at the shop, when I'm at the shop and um, it's asking me to fill out all of this information, this that's being asked, that comes from those fields. You notice with this particular client, there are also these extra special fields. Pick up time and specify your meet options. So if you want to do that, you just add extra fields. You add extra fields, you remove fields. Notice there's some you cannot remove. If you can't remove a field, how do you think you remove it from use? Not display. Do not display. Just turn off that check mark. We're not collecting country. It's all USA. So maybe just hide it can't delete it. You can have more than one checkout form. You just need to create a new one, save it, edit them, and then when you need to use them, you'll be able to select them. And in this screen then, um, you need to remember to save at the bottom if you make any changes. Marketing. Uh, yes. Sorry, uh, under the payment section, which is a PayPal Payment Center 2.0, right? That's mm -hmm. what it shows. Yeah, PayPal Standard, pay, PayPal Payment Standard 2.0, yes. 2.0. Standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by click. And... Thank you. Okay, under marketing, uh, I'm going to gloss over most of them except to mention one thing. If you've got Google Analytics, if you've taken my class from other semesters and such, we talk about Google Analytics. If you don't know what Google Analytics are, it's a free software that Google gives you to keep track of all the traffic that goes to your website. Google Analytics can tell you what city someone visited from, uh, what web browser they used, how long they spent on your site, lots of this information that you didn't know that Google knew. You can know it too if you set up a Google Analytics account. I teach a class in that. It's the SEO class and the advanced Google class. You can look it up. But if you've got Google Analytics and you can plug it in here, you can plug in your code and then Google will keep track of everything that's happening in your shopping cart and it will then give you also more data about your customers and what what pages they clicked on on your site to buy your product and all this advanced stuff. So Google Analytics is useful to set up and that looks like it's got a link right there that will tell you all about it or you can take the class. Besides on marketing here, you can read it, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is the closest thing that it has to that cross-selling and upselling. Users who bought this also bought X. So based on the categories and such that we make up, if we turn that on, it'll give suggestions. Not as powerful as WooCommerce. That one's really powerful. You can get all of you can set up all of these rules. Let's say if someone spends enough money on this, suggest that. Or if someone buys this, also suggest that because it goes well with it. But that's an extra like $40 plugin on top of WooCommerce. So this will work okay. But for more features, you can pay more. Let's look at import. 
turn the, the, the last page in that one. So we just, add, we just turn on the add user, the very first one. It's recommended, yes. That way you can uh, cross sell a little bit and maybe get some more sales. And what about everything? The nope, I skipped everything between, else. Between. Nope, I skipped everything else. Okay. You, you should look at it yourself and decide what's a good option. Now, there's, um, there's usually, from the point of view of my company to get a new contract, there's two there's two types of, of clients. The, the ones that um, are starting from scratch from the, from the beginning. So they're letting our company design the logo and the website and everything. And then there's the ones that have already been established. Uh, as uh, my company, to speak for my company, the, for us the best clients are the ones that we can start from the beginning because we can lay down the foundation of everything. All the information, architecture, and everything. But oftentimes it doesn't happen. We often get a client that already has some setup. So that also goes with shopping carts. You might also, you might already have some sort of e-commerce system that you might not be happy with. And so what you'd have to do is import those products into this shopping cart solution. The easier thing, of course, is to start from the beginning, to start to create your products and prices and all of that. Next time we will do that. We will create brand new products. But some of us might already have a whole inventory that we want to add to this e-commerce. And unfortunately, there's no easy way to do this with any plugin because every plugin thinks they can do it the best way. WooCommerce believes that all of everything should be set up a certain way. WP Commerce believes that. They've got a better way. Business Catalyst believes they've got a better way. Magento believes they've got a better way. They all believe they've got a better way to do e-commerce. Therefore, it's pretty hard to take your products from another solution and bring it into this solution or to take your products out of this solution and take it over to WooCommerce. So from any one, it's going to be difficult. And I've dealt with that. My company's dealt with that. We had a client that they were getting out of, I don't remember what it was, but then they wanted to get into Business Catalyst, which is a whole different beast, but it's like WordPress, basically. And we had a long time, a lot of effort, paid of course, where we needed to get their data out of that other database into this database format. So a lot of you might not need this screen, but if you need to import products that already exist, you're going to look at this screen and memorize it. Because this is telling you, this is how you're going to import your data. You're going to import it as a, as a spreadsheet, basically, and it needs to have these properties. It needs to have a product name, obviously. It needs a description, an additional description. It needs a price, a SKU, a weight. I'll talk about what all of these things mean next time. But this is what this database of this shopping cart expects. You might be on another shopping cart database, and it doesn't use the additional description. You still need to import, but your additional description will be empty. And it can take in kilograms and pounds and inches and all of that. And... Here's an example. You're importing your data. Banana, the yellow fruit, contains potassium, $0.67. Banana, 150 grams. And the other fields are empty. Here's another example. Apple, red. Red, round, juicy, with a link. And then, comma, red, delicious, comma, 25 cents, comma, red, delicious, comma, etc. So if you're bringing data from another database, you're going to need to massage it into the format of this database. And honestly, it's not difficult. I'm sorry. Honestly, it is difficult. Uh, our company had to do it at least once, and it was difficult. And we had like three people working on it for days. Question? Um, can you import email membership? Um, mm. Like if you already have Established, uh, are you trying to give them brand new user accounts, or what are you trying to bring in? Yeah. Um, well, let's say I have clients of contact. I already have a way of advertising my products without a website. Now I have a website, and I don't want new clients of contact anymore because now I can do many things. Well, you. That's two different. 
concepts. Constant contact works really well to send out emails to people, to, to let them know about a sale and updates and so forth. And WordPress has an aspect of that, but really constant contact is better for that. MailChimp is better for that. So you really wouldn't be importing that email contact list into WordPress. WordPress would really care about your products more than your customers, so to speak. So you would still use constant contact or MailChimp, etc. Okay. Yes. For marketing purposes, is there a way of che checking your uh, tracking sources? Like if you have a phone number on my, uh, if you have like a uh, 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 Google Plus account or some maybe a, some type of internet messaging service, and then you have you can know which ones are sending you the leads to this. By the tracking number, the telephone number, the call. That's out of our. That's out of the scope of WordPress. It's not really designed for that. But there's plenty of solutions out there. I'm kind of blanking on any at the moment, but there are solutions out there that set themselves up to do that to track where your where your leads coming from to help you gain conversions. Um, I'd have to to look it up for some examples, uh, but they definitely exist. There's companies out there that make a living fixing or filling that. Uh, like a call center, wouldn't it? Okay. That would be one aspect of it, but um, yeah, I'd have to kind of look it up to give you a better answer. Okay. The last thing that we'll look at is presentation. Let me just mention the parts for the moment. We'll look at them again next time. Let me mention the parts that I would recommend. I would recommend to turn on display fancy purchase notification. You saw that when I added something to the cart in Texcoco, the restaurant, a little box popped up that said, keep shopping, check out now. That's what that is. If you have that on no, you don't really get any feedback, which is odd. So the person would have to figure out, okay, did I really add it to the cart or not? And they pressed it three times. And then now they've got three of those items in the cart. I would recommend turn on the fancy purchase box because that'll tell them right away. You added it to the cart. Would you like to check out or buy more? I also recommend Scroll all the way down. You'll see a section near pagination, but right above it you'll see use light box effect. That one's yes. But I would recommend then turn on the next one, light box script, color box. That's the one that gives you the zoom in feature. When you've got a nice big photo, it'll show it in various sizes automatically and you turn on color box and it gives you a very cool pop-up with a zoom in and stuff like that I still like the one better that's on Elsa's site but that's a different theme and plugin but color box works really well so I will go back to all of these in more detail next time because then we'll start to add products but I want to save at this point saved it. And there's a bunch that we still want to look at here, like the size of our thumbnails and grid display and all this other cool stuff for the presentation of our store. We're just about out of time though, so I want to wrap up the main lecture at this point. Um, and what I want to do, like we did at the beginning of the day, I asked you to resurrect your site to get us started. Now I'm going to ask you on your own, try to do the archiving of the site. It's sheet number four again. It's this first part, archive your site. Try to do that on your own. We're going to end the main lecture at this point. Call me over if you need the help, but when we come back next time we're going to start adding products and coupons and variations and design and all that cool stuff and we'll be uh, keep learning about e-commerce with WordPress. But for the moment, archive your site. I'll put a copy of mine in the folder. Try it on your own. If you can't quite get it, call me over. We have lab time until 4. We'll do it again next time.